Hi everyone, Stepan here. I have to redeem myself for the last training game, <clears throat> so I'm playing another one. Uh, uh, okay, I'm gonna play the London system because I haven't played it in a while. Uh, last game, I don't know if you saw it, uh, I've spent some time analyzing it now. I don't think I ever got destroyed so badly. Uh, my opponent played the line in the Benoni, which I didn't know. And then very quickly we got into an endgame, which I didn't understand. And I just got absolutely smashed. It was incredible. Okay, let, let's focus on this game. So on queen b3, bishop f4, uh, queen b7... Knight d7, e f4, he has rook b8, so I don't like that. So I'm gonna go bishop g3. I don't want to trade pieces if I don't have to. Uh, he could have, by the way, taken and played bishop check. That would have been normal. Uh, now on queen b3 here, what does he do? Queen b3, he probably plays queen c8. Because on Queen b3, queen b6, c5, queen b3, a b3, bishop b1, rook b1. I feel like I should be better. Okay, he, he could go queen c7 though. That's so stupid. Queen b3 doesn't do that much. Uh, I'm gonna go knight c3. My bishop is not on the di diagonal anymore. Uh, so knight f3 seems sensible. <clears throat> I'm gonna wait for him to take on c4 if he wishes to do that. Uh, can I not go knight h4 here? Knight h4, bishop g4, f3, bishop h5, g4. He's gonna have to take with the f pawn. Unless he goes bishop e4, in which case... Because with my pawn on g3, my knight is defended, so he doesn't have that many tricks. So bishop h4, bishop e4, knight e4, d4. How do I save my knight? Hmm. Maybe I don't have knight h4. Knight h4, bishop g4 doesn't concern me. Although even there he has g5. Hmm. I don't think I can go knight h4. Okay, so I'm going to go rook c1. I don't think I had knight h4 there. Now I could have knight h4 because g5 is risky, but still. Okay, normal moves. Bishop d3 is a normal move. He takes on c4. <clears throat> I need to play against e5, so his next move is rook e8. Okay, I'm gonna go bishop d3. Uh, that's the most sensible move I could make, I feel. Okay.
I want to go g4 and start attacking, but I don't think I have g4. <clears throat> so if I go knight e5, knight e5, d5, knight d7, seems too risky. Seems like this is just going to be a normal game and they're wasting too much time. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to take on, on d5. It's going to be a normal game. It's going to be a Carlsbad and I'm going to go b4. I'm going to go for the minority attack because it's a Carlsbad structure and... That seems to be the most sensible thing to do. I'm also going to castle. There's no attack along the H file. And next move, I want to go B5. So now this is basically a Carlsbad pawn structure where I already launched a minority attack. Uh, Queen B6, I don't understand. <clears throat> what if I go B5? So b5, can he go c5? I could also consider occupying the c5 square and just blocking things up. So b5, c5, dc5, I'm guessing knight c5. And then bishop g6, and then I can take. So I'm going to start with bishop g6 and then go b5 to prevent c5. This just seems like a slight advantage to white. know what rook a3 does so I take on c6 he takes with the b pawn I go knight a4 he does something and I go knight c5 that seems okay okay Unless I have something better here. I should have a small advantage. So, knight a4, the queen moves, I go knight c5, he takes, I play rook c5, he plays knight d7, I go rook c1, Is there anything better than knight a4 here? That's the question. I don't think so. I'm going to go knight a4. I want to occupy the square in front of the backwards pawn. I'm actually happy he played queen a5 because now on knight c5 I get another tempo if he takes. He's playing very quickly but he allowed everything I wanted to do. So now if I go knight e5, he doesn't have knight e4, and I'm threatening to take. 
and if he goes rook a8 so knight e5 rook a8 rook c6 rook a1 i take on on a6 so that also seems okay so is there anything wrong with knight e5 i don't think so he's not attacking my rook so he doesn't have rook e5 And next move, yeah, I, I'm just gonna go queen c1 now. And that should win a pawn. So queen c1, how can he defend? I don't think he can defend, so queen c1. This is a minority attack that was so successful that it should be in textbooks. So, okay, I go rook c6. And I don't think he has rook e5. Okay, so, so rook c6. If rook c6, I'm gonna go queen c6, I think. And then if he doesn't trade, I go queen e8. Okay. Now I'm threatening knight e7, so he needs to defend against that. Okay, he didn't defend against that. Why isn't he defending? I don't know. He's just allowing me to do to do whatever I want to do. That's very strange. He just I create a threat and he doesn't defend against it. Now I need to get my knight to h3 to be able to develop my rook. Okay, sensible, preventing uh, knight f4. I don't have f3, I cannot move my rook. So, I mean, I can move my rook. I can go rook c1 and I'm threatening checkmate. So rook c1, if he takes on f2, it's mate. And if he doesn't... If he moves the king, then I have knight c3. So rook c1... King e8, knight c3, knight c3, rook c3. Yeah, th this works, this works. He doesn't have rook f2 or knight f2. Now I got rid of the of the problem. He doesn't have time for knight f2 because I take the rook. Yeah, now I'm just two pawns up and okay, he wants to play rook a2, winning my pawn, so I'm, I'm not gonna allow that. 
So either rook c2, which is the safest. Yeah, rook, rook c2 is just safe. And then if he plays rook a3, yeah, now, now I'm gonna go f3. Uh, and e4. Or e4 immediately. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't have to think about this so much, but I'm gonna try not to blunder. So if he takes on f3, then everything's great. If he doesn't take on f3... Okay, I'm gonna go f3. That, that seems okay. I'm expecting... Yeah, he takes, takes, and... Uh, I take, and I think rook c5 is best. Because I need to free up my king. So rook c5, if he plays king f6. Ah, I could go, I could go rook f2. Yeah, I go rook f2. So rook f2, rook e2. Or rook a3, rook f4, rook a3, rook g4. Okay, that, that works. I need to give my king a square. <clears throat> I don't think he has time for g5. Am I gonna trap my rook? No, he does have time for g5. He has time for king f6, but I can get out now. Okay, now he wants to go g5. He has 17 minutes on the clock. I'm trying to figure out if the king and pawn endgame with my double g pawns and his g6 pawn is winning for me. Basically I'm trying to see what happens if I allow him to win the d pawn and trade rooks. So, rook f3, rook e4, rook d3, king d5, king h3, rook d4, rook d4, king d4, king g4. Yeah, it's... Uh... Again, rook f3, rook e4, rook d3, rook d5, king h3, 
rook d4, rook d4, king d4, king g4, king e5, king g5. Seems winning. Rook f3, rook e4, rook d3, king d5, king h3. Seems winning. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I need to activate my rook. And his only move is rook e4. And he cannot take and trade rooks because the king and pawn endgame is winning. He cannot take. And if he doesn't take, I'm going g4. Okay. That was his last tempo, so I think I can just wait. He doesn't have another move, so I just go rook d1, forcing him into the same endgame. I should have gone rook e2. Idiot. I should have gone rook e2, uh, rook d2 to prevent rook e2. I should have gone rook d2. With rook d2 it was very clean. Why did I go rook d1? He just goes rook e2 here and I cannot go king g4. Why didn't I go rook d2? He offers a draw.
Oh, I'm such an idiot. Why did I go rook d1? Okay, I need to allow him to take and then I need to cut the king off so I go This should work. If I had calculated the king and pawn endgame correctly, and I think I have. If I'd gone rook d2, this would have been the simplest endgame in the world. So, takes, king takes, king g4, king f6, king h5, king f5, g4, king f4, g3, winning. Okay. <clears throat> this could have been much simpler but okay it's still a win a win is a win king f6 loses king f4 loses wow Take back? Sure. I mean, everything's losing. I, I mean, there's no move that draws, so allowing a take back or not, he's going to lose the pawn. Okay, I mean, other than rook d1, this was a pretty clean game. Rook d1 was just a dreadful blunder. I don't know what he's thinking, every move loses. King f4 is the only move that makes any sense, but after... He has to choose a side and it's over. I got the opposition with the extra tempo. This is actually an instructive king and pawn end game. If you don't know it, then it's useful. Whichever way he goes, you go the other way, and then you grab the opposition again. Oh, come on. He had 17 minutes on move 40, and now he's using time in a dead lost king and pawn end game. Every move wins because I have an extra tempo, but this wins more.
I'm not gonna stalemate you. Uh, so g4, king h7, yeah, and then it all runs with checks. Okay, uh, I don't know what to say about this game. The only thing I'm interested in is if this is theory or not. I know that bishop b1 is theory. I don't know bishop d6. So it has never been played. I don't know what the correct move is. Bishop g3 is okay, but taking on d6 seems better. So takes, queen takes, and queen b3, queen b6. Can I then go c5? No. Okay. All of this seems sensible. I had knight h4. What happens on bishop e4? I was afraid of this. Okay, but it's no big deal. Yeah, okay, makes sense. A4 is a mistake. I should go rook H4. Why not go for a minority attack? I don't get it. I mean, this is just very standard. I don't see why I wouldn't do this. How can this be only plus 0.6? After rook c1 it's plus 0.6. How is this a draw? This is a draw? No, it's not. Okay, okay. The engine just change, changes its mind. And now... Wait, what? This is a drawn endgame? What? I'm an idiot. In my mind, he didn't have access to f2. Yeah, no, he doesn't. He doesn't take on g2. Oh my god! Yeah, this king and pawn end game is. Wait, I still don't get it. So in this position. Yeah, I don't go rook d3, I go, I go rook f4. But isn't that a repetition? I was afraid of g5 here, I didn't want to allow g5. But yeah, it seems fine. Yeah, okay, this, this was cleaner. Wait, if I'd go on rook d2 here, how does he win? He just waits. It's very hard to believe that this is a draw. Yeah, if I allow the king to the f-file, I, I know that it's a draw. 
Okay, let's try to go around with the king. <clears throat> This is also a draw. Why is this a draw? Ah, because he has rook d8. Wait, what? this be a draw <laughs> this is insane the king is cut off I never have time for g4 king g3 so so in this position, if I go, yeah, then he checks me from the side. It's okay, let's say I go here. And I still don't have time for g4. This is insane. So let, let me show you. So if I had time for this, so let's say he doesn't play rook g1, he waits. Then I'm winning, because I, I can get my king to g3. If I get my king to g3, it's over. But I can never go g4 without allowing his king to the f-file, which is a draw. So the only winning move was rook f4. Because then I can get my king to g4. Yeah. Because now the king is cut off and my king is in front of the pawns. So basically if we get the same position with my king on h2, it's a draw. Because I can never cross to the other side of the pawns. Okay. Uh, this for me at least was instructive. Not the game, but the end game. Uh, Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.